Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami, Masachas Baba Kama Daf Ayin Dalad. We begin on Ayin Gimel Bez on the very last line. So just before we begin, let's backtrack for a second for a brief recap of yesterday's uh, Gemara, which will lead us into today's Gemara, because we're right in the middle of a discussion here. Rabbi tells us a Chiddush. Although Adam, two witnesses, have already experienced Hakechosha, which means they were challenged on the facts, of their testimony by another pair of Adam, which basically triggers a full cancellation. We scratch both teams off the record. So a collision, a hakrosha, generates cancellation. However, even if the Adam had already experienced hakrosha, but then their troubles got even deeper, they were made into Adam Zoyimimin afterwards. So a pair of Adam came along and challenged them on a personal level, how can you pretend to have witnessed a certain scene at that location at this time if you were in our company at that time at a different location? And once you turn into an eight Zaymim, you have to fill in, you have to sort of take the shoes of the victim which you had tried to victimize. If it's a question of monetary payment, you have to pay whatever you intended on you know, imposing on that person, etc. So the Chiddush of Rava is, even though the Edom had already become Mukhash, they were sort of cancelled out by another pair, Hakechosha is merely viewed as phase one of the discreditation process, in which case, when phase two comes along and they become Edom Zemimin, we view them as still, you know, active Edom, not cancelled Edom, they're still here in order to be susceptible to the Hazama, which is viewed as phase two to the Hakrasha. So it sort of builds on it. And they're susceptible to the Halachis of Edim Zemimin. And Rabbi had a right. Rabbi brought a proof from the Brisa, which involved a, some sort of testimony of a, a master of an Evet Knani, who knocked out his, his tooth, his eye, and we know that if any one of those gets injured by the master, the Evet goes free. And according to Rabbi, the Brisa, was presenting a very sort of complex story where there were three pairs of Adam. One pair said A, the other pair said B, which made the Hakhasha, and then pair C, next pair came along and made the second pair Zaymimin. So we see that even though pair B had already experienced Hakhasha, they're still liable to Hazam. And Abaye responded, Omar Abaye on the last line, Omar Abaye, no, you know, who says we're speaking about such an elaborate story? No. This story entailed just two pairs of Adam. One pair said the story took place one way. The other pair says, well, actually, the, uh, the owner, the, the master attacked the slave, in which case he earned his freedom, but it took place differently. And not only that, you guys were never even there, and they were mousing them. So that explains why they're considered Adam Zayman, because there was no element of Akhash. That's Abaye's response, because really once the Edom would have been Mukhash, they're not on the scene anymore, they're cancelled, they're non-existent, they're off the record, and there's nothing to be Mazen. So the Gemara Mimai, how does Abaye know that we're speaking about this type of case? The answer is, because if you take a look at the next part of the price, the Seif, which evidently, entails a case of Meipach Vahazama, where the second pair turned around the story, plus they were Mazam the first pair, Reisha Nami, be Meipach Vahazama, likewise the Reisha. Most likely, the Reisha is also speaking about a similar case of Meipach Vahazama, where pair A claimed one story, pair B came and turned it around, turned around the facts, turned around the sequence of the story, plus they were Mazam pair A, but of course there was no Akhashan involved. How do we know that? Tani Seifa, because take a look at the next part of the rice. Me dono as he's planning, so this team comes along, claims as follows. We're here to testify that this master did as follows to his poor slave. First he knocked out his tooth, which triggers freedom. And then he knocked out his eye. He blinded him, which triggers a very heavy compensation payment. The eye is worth, you know, $1,000. And the Evid is very happy to hear about this testimony. He wants to go free, he wants to get this compensation. That's their testimony. It's been discovered that they're Zaymimin, they're just plotters, fabricators. 
What is the consequence? Thousand dollar eye compensation payment back to the owner, something which they would have tried to impose on him. Now let's try to step back and analyze the case and the halacha. Hey Chidami, what exactly took place? Either the second pair, which are turning the first pair into Edmund Zemim, are they in total disagreement, a total denial about this fact, about the fact that he attacked him? So in that case, the first pair was trying to set free an Evid who was not deserving of freedom. So on top of this payment, they should have, on top of the eye compensation payment, they should be paying the master Dmei Kuli Evid the full value of the Ebed Lerav to the master boy Shlumile, they're required to pay him because they were trying to trigger freedom on the Ebed which he wasn't deserving of so it must be there's something more to the story apparently both pairs are in full agreement that there was an attack that took place which triggered freedom first pair presented as uh, the sequence as first the tooth was knocked out on the eye so he goes free plus he gets compensated for that eye because the knocking out of the tooth triggers freedom no payment but the injuring of the eye triggers compensation so they attempted to set the abbot free and to give him this full compensation for his eye come the second pair and they switch around the sequence sure he's, he's to go free because there was this attack but it took place in, a, in the reverse sequence first the eye was blinded, which triggers freedom, no payment there. And then the tooth was knocked out, a minimal compensation, $100. So that explains why the first pair have to pay, but not an exorbitant amount of money. The Evid would have been let free in any case. So what were they trying to deprive the master of? They were trying to pull out this $1,000 compensation instead of just $100 for the tooth. So that's a bias raya that the second part is speaking about this type of case. So it was the first part of the brisa. We're not speaking about anybody contradicting. It's just a plain classic case of hazama. Now we have a kasha. Echid dummy. So once we speak about two pairs of edim and the second pair switched around the story and was mazim. Echid dummy. What exactly were they saying? Idu kama achri achri hane basroi. The second pair were delaying. They were coming after the first pair who had claimed that the attack took place on Sunday so the evidence meant to be set free on Sunday and they come and say no no it happened on Monday you know in the reverse sequence as we explained but ultimately they're also agreeing that he's meant to go free but a day later so the question now is until Monday this Evid was not really deserving of freedom. So when the first pair came on Sunday and claimed that he was, they're really trying to release a full Evid. So once again, they're responsible for his full value. Because at that early point, until Sunday, until Monday, on Sunday, he's still not deserving of freedom. They should be paying his full value to the master. Why? Because when they try to trigger this freedom, when they try to obligate the owner, to set him free, Akati Gavr La Barchiyavu. He really was not obligated to set him free at that early point on Sunday. So it must be Eladukam Makad Mikadumi Hane Basroi. It must be the other way around. That the first pair of Adam claimed that the attack took place on, let's say, on, on Monday. And the second pair who come later, they're in full agreement. They say, yeah, yeah, actually, actually. Uh, the attack took place on Sunday. First pair claimed Monday, a day later. There, the legitimate, really, they were coming and agreeing that the, the evidence was meant to go free because the attack took place actually a day earlier. The facts were wrong. You know, the sequence is off, but the actual concept is correct. He's meant to go free even from, from Sunday. So ultimately, the false aid were not really trying to deprive the master of his Evid, which in any case should have been set free a day earlier. Well, once again, we did within, but if he hadn't yet gone to the Bezin, only the Bezin's involvement can actually, uh, you know, uh, trigger this formal freedom. So if there was no Ahmad Bedin at that point, Akatid Mekuli Evid Rabbi So once again, the false Adam are trying to impose 
freedom, impose, you know, obligate the owner to set him free before he's really obligated to do so. So once again, the same problem. They should be fully responsible for his value. He's not yet to release his effort. Same terrorists. The point is that the legitimate Edema agreeing that uh, really already back from Sunday, the owner uh, was was uh, issued this verdict. Uh, the Bezin obligated him to pay, to, to sorry, to release the Evan. So in any case, come Monday, the Evan was really technically a free man and the false Edom weren't really trying to set free a real Evan. So that we don't have to address. The only thing they have to pay for is the extra compensation which they would have tried. They tried, they attempted to obligate the owner. In reality, he wasn't really obligated to pay for the eye because the eye wasn't the second thing, it was really the tooth that was the second. That's what they have to pay. Okay, so this is Abai's approach to the entire Brysa. We're speaking without any Hakkasha elements. It was one pair presenting one way, another pair came and switched it around and also made them Edim Zemimim. Amalei Rav Acha Bredi Rav Ikel Rav Ash. But the fact is that Rava had a different approach to the Brysa. Three pairs of Edim, pair A, pair B, which was contradicting pair A, so there was an Hakkasha already before the third pair came along to make them Edim Zemimim. Do you the Rava Mehecha? How did Rava know we're speaking about, you know, a three-tier system? Ilema Mereisha. Is it from the, you know, the first part of the Brysa, where the first pair had said, well, he attacked the, the Evid in this manner. First tooth and then eye. In which case he has to pay $1,000 for the eye. Second pair came and said, eye and then tooth. So he only has to pay for the tooth. Comes third pair and says, well, actually, uh, you, you fellows have no business talking about the story that took place, that allegedly took place in front of you. You weren't even there. So Rava's point was, well, the second pair had already undergone hakhasha. They were sort of contradicted by the first pair. And still we see they're open to hazama. So we see hakhasha is viewed as, uh, you know, something compatible with hazama, right? Why is that called hakhasha? Since when is the second pair, the middle pair, experiencing Akhasha. They're not. The fact is, pair one decided he has to pay for the eye, $1,000. Pair B decided only the tooth, $100. What would happen if we would stop right here? He would have to pay 100 right? You can't obligate him more than 100 right? As per the second pair's testimony. So the second pair is not being, country, is not being canceled. Actually, we're working very much with them. We're sort of accepting what they're saying. For the time being. So that's not called cancelled out. That's not called hakhasha. Mikum is kachshim. It's a since one is the middle pair being cancelled. Given the loy mitasm. Were not for the fact that a third pair came and made them Adam Zaymimin. So for the time being, we would have, we would have totally accepted their words as facts. I'll do sukkah of a kaima. The Adas, the testimony, the facts would be followed according to what they're saying. The dina of a sayyukha Because that's how we, we would issued a verdict. We would obligate the owner to just pay a hundred dollars. The yesh b'chalal masai in mana. Within two hundred, there's a hundred. It's an expression, meaning the hundred dollars presented by the second pair is included in the thousand dollars of the first pair. So basically, you would just go with the hundred dollars. You can't increase, but you can do a hundred, which is something, you know, which is a consensus number, right? between these two pairs of Edom. So ultimately it's the first pair that are not getting their way. They're trying to get a thousand dollars and we're not giving it, right? The second pair is not going through Akhasha, we're actually sort of adopting their facts. So where did Rabbi see that Akhasha is not a block to Hazama? Amalei, so he responded, Rava Sava, Rava figured, just like the first part of the Bible speaks about three groups, Seifa and Amishalosh Kitais, likewise the second part, and the Diak is from the Seifa. Okay, listen to this, the Daik is Seifa. Rava analyzed the second part of the Bible and came to his conclusion that Hakhasha is phase one for Hazama. Keep going to also be What happened was, one team of Adam came, but Amri and presented that he pulled a shinoi, besimi enoi. First came the tooth and the eye. So he has to pay for the eye. Upaskine, ladina pumayu. And that's how we concluded the bezin, thousand dollars. 
but also be terachinim. Come another pair. Ve'amre they switch around the story. Simeis enay he builds shinei first the eye and the tooth. The kamukachshi the kamukachshi lulani kamoy. So they're directly opposing the first team, right? So we had sort of adopted the first team's facts as fact, thousand dollar payment. Now the second pair is undoing that, usurping their position. And here comes the clincher, a third pair comes along and makes the first pair, which had sort of been accepted as fact. We take them, we throw them out, we make them we totally discredit them. What does the Bryce say? Mishalmand may I in the rub. They have to pay the thousand dollar compensation, the eye compensation, but they tried to impose on the master. Even though they've already undergone Hakhash and we sort of rejected their story because of the second pair that was Makhashem. Went down from a thousand to a hundred. So unless you agree this that, that the Akhash can be considered phase one as the, of the Azam, I my so why are they paying at all? Once they become Adam uh, Zemimin. They're out of here, they're off the records. Because initially they went through the Akhasha system. They're canceled. They're non existent. El no, this is Rav Raya. Apparently, Hakhasha Trilas Azamahi, Hakhasha is phase one for the Azama. And, you know, it sort of works together. Now, Abayi Amalach, Abayi who disagrees, will respond Who says to learn the Brysa this way? I understand why you prefer to interpret the first part of the Brysa in a manner which involves three groups of Adam. Sharek Tani Harav came because the Brysa stipulates that the master was pleased. Why would he be pleased with the uh, uh, you know, releasing of his ever the compensation payment? So apparently, we learned this yesterday, apparently it was because the first pair of Adam were trying to really impose big sanctions on him and the second pair came and sort of made it lighter. Third pair, so we see there were many pairs involved. But in the second part of the Brysa, what compels you to learn that we're speaking about this elaborate scheme with three groups? Because the Brysa speaks about the Evid being pleased? Evid called him Evid uh, in anything, anything that you give him. Meima Amr Denichalei is perfectly uh, happy. The Nebuchadnezzar Cheres, Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar, he's perfectly happy to go free. Whatever he gets, he's running with, he's, he's happy. So you don't necessarily have to speak about all kinds of phases and groups and teams coming back and forth. It could be a pretty straightforward case. One pair says, well, he goes free because of this. Came the other pair and said, look, Actually, he goes free, but because of a different sequence of events. And you first pair of Adam Zemimin. So, all you have is a straightforward Adam Zemimin without a Khasha, and you have no Raya. That, um, you know, this uh, fact holds true that a Khasha is Tchilas Hazam. Right, so bottom line is, we have this great Machlikis between Abayi and Rav. If Adam underwent Hakhasha, can we still be Mazam them? Rav says, sure. Hakhasha is phase one of the discreditation process and can easily lead into phase two. They're stamped as Edom Zemimin. Abayah says, once Edom are mukhash, they're canceled. Scratched off the books. They're non-existent. They're not active. Edom. And are not liable to Hazama. Now this whole Bryce is working on a very interesting premise. The Torah speaks about a master blinding the Evid, sets him free. Knocking out his tooth, sets him free. But if he does both, one and then the other, first attack triggers freedom, the second triggers compensation payment, which is a chiddush. Mask of the Who says? Ema, maybe we can say two for the price of one. Simi is Einoi. If he blinds him, Nepepeina. So he goes free because of that. He builds Shinoi, knocks out his tooth. Nepepeina, he goes out because of that. But let's say he does both. Okay, he gets no compensation. Simi is Einoi. If he builds Shinoi, okay, Nepepeina is Shinoi. Package deal. He goes free because of both. Who says he has to pay? Amalei Abayis. Abayi responded. Allah Because of this question, the Pasuk clearly stipulates that it's one or the other. Tachas Eino, he goes free because of his eye. Why does the Pasuk have to stress he's going out because of the eye? We already mentioned the eye. To tell you, the eye is reason enough to let him go. He don't need the, the tooth. Not because of the eye and the tooth. One or the other. And the Pasuk says he leaves because Tachas in exchange for his, for his tooth that was knocked out. The terrorist stresses Tachas Only because of one. There's no such thing as going free because of the eye and the tooth. So they were both attacked. One triggers freedom, the other one triggers compensation. Okay, now let's go back to our sugya Regarding the question of Akhasha leading to Hassan. 
I'm going to read the word Abin. Afanana mitanina. Take a look at our Mishnah. Enough ayin days. We're going to prove Rabbah's point. That Akhasha is regarded as phase one to the Hasama. Mishnah says, Gonam al Pishlaim. So this fellow turned out to be a robber based on Shnaim, two, you know, two Adam testifying as such. The same team is also coming to testify about the Tvich and the Mechira. It turns out they're just Zayimim. The Shamalis are killed, they have to pay the full amount, four or five, the whole thing. How exactly did they become Zayimim? What was the you know, sequence of events? My love, it must be the Idu, we'll assume, the Idu al Sunday, they testified about the robbery. Monday, they came and testified about the Tvich. Who's Malak Neva? Then they became Zaymin on the Gneva portion. The Chazru, who's Malak Tvich? And then they became Huzam on the Tvich portion. Mishnah says they're liable to the full Dal Dvahe payment to the owner. But let's take it apart step by step. Once they became Zemimin on the first part of the Gneva, which basically means their testimony regarding the robbery becomes fully discredited. Never happened, as far as we're concerned. Now, if there's no Gneva, there's no Tvicha. Tvicha is phase two of the Gneva, right? So, the Gabi Tvicha, regarding their second, the second portion of their testimony, when they purported that this fellow was Tevech, a stolen animal, but Robbery never happened, right? Havala Mukhashan. For all practical purposes, they're contradicted. By default, they're contradicted. True. Technically, the Azama only was directed at the Adis of the Gneva. But once that becomes discredited and non existent, that means the person never stole. So the second part of the story sort of gets, the rug gets pulled out from beneath. It never happened. So by default, they become Mukhashan on that. And still, what does the mission say? If ultimately they become Zemimin, even on the Atvicha, they have to pay full. Uktani Meshamon is Hakoil. Why? If you would say that Akhosh loved Chilas Hazamahi, Akhosh is not viewed as phase one to the Azama, which basically means once you become Mukhash, you're out of here. You're not to be reckoned with. You can't become Edim Zemimin. Atvicha, my Meshamon. So why are they paying for the Atvicha? El Allah Shmami. No, that's a Raya to Rava's point that Akhosh is Chilas Hazamahi. Amri, so the answer was no. Hachamai Skinner was speaking against Shehuzmal Tvichat Chila. You thought that the Hazama took place on the Geneva first, and that no. They became Zemimin on the second part of the testimony first. And that triggers, you know, the payment for the Tvichat, which is three. And then, only then, they became Zemimin on the Geneva as well, which triggers the other Kefal for a total of five. Ubi Pluktun, actually. This uh, machlekes between Abay and Rabbi, how to treat Hakhash vis-a-vis Hazama, is also machlekes between Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi Lazar. Edem shehukhashu lepasayf hozmu, right? Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi Lazar have a machlekes. Chadama once says Neher Rogan. They get killed if it's a case where they try to impose capital punishment on this innocent person. Chad Amar, Ein Neher Rogan. The other one says they don't get killed because once they became hukhash, they're off the record. To stein the Rebbelezer with Amayin Herogen, we can prove that Rebbelezer is the one who says they don't get killed, meaning they don't become Edim Zemimin once they experience that Kasha. Don't Rebbelezer. Edim Meshuk Cheshub Nefesh Leikin. That Edim who tried to impose capital punishment on a person and they were not turned into Edim Zemimin. They were Hukhash, they were sort of contradicted on the facts. So they get Malkus. Rashi says, which Malkus? Leisan Ebrech Eid Shaka, don't offer false testimony. They get Malkus, but no Misa. Misa would only apply if they would be Edim Zemimin, which they're not. So how does that pertain to our discussion? If Reb Lezer was the one who says that even after Hakhash you can become Edim Zemimin, am I liking? So why would they get Malkus when they're just Hukhash, when they just become contradicted? What's the problem? Because theoretically, their testimony can still generate Misa if, in fact, they become Edim Zemin on this, you know, presentation of theirs. So technically, what they did can theoretically, potentially bring them Misa. And the fact is, have they love? So this love, don't offer false testimony. In this case, is a love which can generate Misa for them. Just wait and see. Maybe they become Zemin tomorrow. So it's a love Shanitan, Lazarus Misa's business, coming to warn you against doing something that can generate Misa from Bezden. And the Allah is. 
A lav can only serve one purpose at a time. Mechalav shanitan lazarus misis bezin. A lav which is warning against capital punishment from bezin ain't like an olav. It cannot generate malchus. So although technically currently they're not yet Eden Zayim, but it can lead to that and it can lead to Misa. So this love is sort of occupied. It's used for something else. It cannot be used for Malchus. Elo love Shemam. No, so that proves our point. There are Blezer, who says that it can generate Malchus. Who he holds. Ain Herogen once you become Hukhash. There's no potential for Eden Zayim and no potential for Misa on them. Which explains why the love will generate Malchus. Testayim. So that's the good, the right. Well, says the Gemara, hold it. A pair of Adam presented that this fellow killed. A pair of Adam came and contradicted them. He didn't kill. First pair gets Malchus. Lakin? Malchus? Why? Trey, Trey, Nino. It's two against two. My chazas. Who's to say the Sam Chazani? You trust the second pair. Sumay Chani trusts the first pair. So Rashi explains. True. When it comes to Adam, Zaymimim, we trust the second pair. It's a special chidush, Xeris HaKosov, that. When the second pair sort of addresses the personal aspect of the first pair's presentation, you weren't even there. That's a totally different halacha, Edim Zayim. But here it's not so. They're just contradicting the facts. This pair is claiming they saw Reuben kill, and they're saying, no, he didn't kill. So why are we trusting the second pair? Amar Bayi, Bebahor, Begur, Forget about testimony and integrity. The alleged victim of this murder walks through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to talk about. Therefore, they get Malkus. Continues the mission. God of Abishnai. The Tavach Umachar Apied Echad. Two of them offer testimony that this fellow stole. Okay. And then the fellow himself admits that he did Tvichom Mechira. Sorry, Apied Echad. For the second part, you only have one aid. Oy Api Atzme, or he admitted himself. That he did tvicha mishalom kashlum kefil only pays the kefil on account of the edus of the gneiva. Any mishalom tashlum dalve doesn't pay the extra payments because it's only either one aid or his own admission. And we know that a person who's moide beknas he admits it regarding a penalty and a fine, which is what dalve he is. He's part. Here come several more examples of exemptions. Gone up the by Shabbos. He stole, and he shechted on Shabbos. He's part on the tvicha because. It's a melacha on Shabbos, which generates chiyiv misa, which uh, preempts any sort of financial penalties. Ganav v'tavach l'avidezara. Likewise, he did the shechita for l'avidezara, which again generates chiyiv misa. He's putter from the penalty. Ganav mishal aviv, or he stole his father's animal. Umei sov, and then his father passed away. V'achakach tavach, and then he did the tavach of the umachar. So at, at that late point, the animal was already partially his. He's a yerush. He's putter. Gun of a Higdish, or he stole an animal and it was Magdish, it made it to a carbon. Then he did Tvicha Mechira while the animal's already Higdish. Mishalim, in all these cases, he pays the Tashlam Kefal, the actual Kefal for the robbery, but not the extra for the Tabachum Machar. Vein of Mishal, Tashlam Dal Behe. Shimon Aimer, all depends. Kachim Shechai Bachar Yusam, if it's a carbon which, for which you're first personally responsible, Mishal, Tashlam Dal Behe, there's payment there. Shein Chai Bachar Yusam, if you're not fully responsible, Potter, there's no payment. I'm going to explain exactly what this is referring to. In the first case, we have a person who stole based on two Edom and did the Tvicha based on one Ed. Of course, how could one Ed even think of triggering payment? You need two, two Edom. Amri said the answer was, how come Ash won the point? The mission is to teach us a point. We cite both examples of exemption. One Ed or Api Atzme. The point of the mission is sort of to compare the two, match them up. So we learn a parallel. Api Atzme, the same exemption due to his own Admission, is comparable to the exemption when it's only one eight. In what way? Ma Just like if it's one eight. For one eight is here today. Comes another eight tomorrow and sort of joins the first eight. That triggers khiv, because now you have a total of two. So the first eight is not cancelled, you're just sort of pending, hovering further further developments. The same with the other case of exemption when he himself admits Nami although today we can't obligate him but Kiyosu Edom Machayev but suppose Edom show up tomorrow and tell us about it he's Chayev despite the fact that he already admitted that's not a blank check of tour it's a temporary sort of hold but if Edom come now we verify the facts through the Edom they're the source of the story he has to pay as opposed to Rav Huna, Rav tells us the other way around. Rav Huna, Rav, the person admits regarding penalty payments that 
gives him a permanent ex- exemption. And even if afterwards Edom come, Achagach, Bo Edom is pot. Gufa, let's go back to this halacha, Marv and Amarav. Moide Beknas, Vachachach, Bo Edom is pot. Israel, Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda has the Kasha, the Rav Huna. How could you say he's pot? Masa, there was a story, Rav Gamliel, right? He owned this famous slave, this uh, Tevi, right? It was a Chacham. Maisim Rav Gamliel, Shasimei is ain't Tevi Avdel. He blinded Tavi's uh, eye. And uh, Gamliel, the master, was very happy. Why? So he meets Rabbi Shua. He tells Rabbi Shua, Don't you know? Big news. My dear slave is not free. So he asked, Why is he free? He says, I blind him. He says, Your words are worthless. Carry no value. You mean Maida? Maida is nothing. Says the Gemara. Apparently, if Adam would come along right now and tell us about it, he would have to release him. But Shamini, we know, we can deduce from this that even though he was already Maida Beknas, but then Vachagach Bo Adam, he's still Chayev. Omar Lei. Serafuna says, no, that's not a Kash. Shani Ramamlil. In Ramamlil's case, it's very different. It's not a proper Maida Beknas. It's not a legal admission. The Lord Bifnei Bezin Aiti. He didn't admit in the presence of Bezin. So that's not called Moide Beknas. But if he admitted in front of Bezin, he's Potter forever. What do you mean? Vara Bishua Bezin Hava. Bishua was the head of the Bezin. How can you say it wasn't? Sadimo Shloi Bezin Hava. True, he was the head of the Bezin, but it wasn't in the, uh, you know, as she says, Loi Hoyu Bezin Yeishvin, Veloi Malkam Yeshivas Bezin Hava. El Bashuga, look, he met him in the street. It wasn't. Where the you know where the bezin was it wasn't in the actual court. Asks the Gemara. Vatanya. But we have a, a different brisa with a little bit of, a little bit of a different version. Amar loy, that Rabbi Shmuel responded on Gamliel. Even the Racha Klum, your words have no value. Shekvar Hadisa because you already admit it. Which sounds like admission generates a permanent exemption which preempts any further liability even if Adam come along and offer their information my love Tanoihi so apparently these two versions these two prices reflect different uh, Tanoi hi Tano Sava the Omar Shekvar Enocha Adam the first version that uh, he doesn't go free because there are no Edim. Savar he holds. If Edim come today, we listen to them. Savar might be knas, and then v'achakach bo Edim, he's chay. V'aytana. But the second version, which put it a little differently, Shdamar says, "Kvar Edim, yeah, Kvar Edim, you're ready to admit it's too late." Holds that that's it, no going back. Savar might be knas, v'achakach bo Edim is potter. So apparently, this whole discussion is, is really machlekes tanoi. Loi says the more not necessarily the kuli alma might be knas v'achakach bo Edim potter. Perhaps everybody agrees. Once you admit, you're pot. Welcome, okay? And the machlek is between these two versions is like this. Hi, Tana Savar. Hi, Tana Da'ama Shekvar Eino Ha'edim. The, uh, the Tana, which used the words Eino Ha'edim, that's the first version, Savar Chusl Bezen Hava. He held that the, the story took place, this exchange took place outside of the Bezen. So, therefore, even if the, uh, the Haidah was a Haidah, but it's not a legal valid Haidah. So if Adam come along afterwards, he's Chai, because the Haidah never really took effect. Vachtan the Amar, Shekvar Haidisa, whereas the second Tana, who used the word Shekvar Haidisa, which sounds like the Haidah, closes the, uh, the book, Savar Bezn Hav. According to that version, he was in the Bezn. He was standing in the Bezn when he made the Haidah. So once he does the Haidah, that's a legal formalized Haidah. That's it, it's over. You can never trigger a chiv on that knas, even if you discover the facts through the Aiden that come later. Okay, that leads us into the next sugya, discussing this very question again. So we have two different uh, discussions today. One is, if Aiden experienced hakhasha, they were contradicted on the facts, and then they move on to hazama. Do they become Aiden Zayman? Rabbi says, yeah, hakhasha is the first level in the discreditation process. They're still liable to hazama. Abai says, once you hook hash, you're off the table. Now we have a discussion regarding Moide Beknas, Vachakach Bo Edim, whether or not he's Chayev or Pot. All the best to you, and that's Lachar